Hey guys, Sludgy Punnett El Prez again, and we're going straight into green uh, with a level 3 rider. So, level 3 rider uh, is a 3295. It is a heal, and if you have four more other green characters, then it comes down to level 2. Uh, we'd like to note that this is not all of her abilities, it has well, she, four she has hidden abilities. Many abilities that aren't on the card. Um... First of all, she can't side attack. Secondly, she can't side attack. Thirdly, she can't be reversed by auto effects. Fourthly, she's and plus she, 2k. And then she also can't side attack. She's got can't side attack twice. I already said can't Infinite. side attack twice. Oh, did you? Yes. Oh, well, cool. We'll get to, uh, we'll anyway, get to this, that later. Yeah, so this card is a really big boon for the Rider deck in that it is a level 2 heal. Um, a lot of opponents will either be ramming or siding into your massive wall and because of that you'll be winning the damage race pretty convincingly and this only adds to that yep um, i think that the inability to side attack is actually relevant here for once um because side attacking with two souls you want to do is, that sometimes yeah because it's not like you really <clears throat> yeah no this this card is fine but uh it doesn't really do anything major for the deck i feel it it you didn't have very many playable level 3 riders before. Um, mm. You had one, which was the 3-2 Fate Zero Rider Clock Kicker, which is an absolutely insane Clock Kicker, but uh, yeah. this is basically going to be taking up more of your level 3 slots than before, because I think before, if you still splash blue, you probably ran the 3-3 Heal 3 event from Fate's Stay. Yeah, that's fair. Otherwise, you probably just didn't run any more level 3s than just your, your Fate Zero Riders. Mm-hmm. But um, I yeah, think this is yeah. a, a really good addition to the deck. I think this is a very good addition to the deck, and I'd give it a good rating in the context of that deck. Yeah, no, um, it's a good card. I wouldn't call it a meta card because well, the meta card is just because the meta card is from a different set. <laughs> mm, agreed. <laughs> so next card is ironically uh... that meta card is also one of them would also be a one one vanilla, which is just absolutely hilarious. So this, this card is pretty good. Um, Devoted Kohai Sakura. Uh, when this is placed to the Climax Zone, choose a character. That character gains 1k for the turn. And Brainstorm, pay 1, tap 2 characters. For each Climax revealed this way, perform the following action. Add a card from Clock to Hand, and then put the top card in your deck in Clock. Yeah, so this is the new plusing Brainstormer. Um, and you are going to be running probably two of this in your Rider deck. Um, um, I still don't think this is as good at getting what you want. It's not. As, uh, it won't be as good as the Akatsuki clone from from UBW One, or the Rin Brainstorm. Uh, this can grab you twins, which the Rin Brainstormer cannot. The Rin Brainstormer gets you anything, can't it? Oh no, the Spamble One. Yes, the Spamble One I think can get you anything. Yeah, that that's what I meant. Like, was there a different one that was run? No, I was not thinking. I was thinking. I got to confuse the Archer one real quick. Yeah, that's fair. Um, uh, so this is plus that... though. Yeah, that that's fair. Um, and you're not uh, really tapping your back rows ideal most of the time, anyways, because your back row yeah. ideally uses two twins. That's fair. Like I do think this card is an auto include in the rider deck, at least one of. I don't know about two, but at least it one seems for fun. sure. But the problem with rider deck is that you don't really have the best card selection, anyways. So like, well, you run the Rin brainstorm, so you've got decent card selection. Like that card alone makes any deck selection really good. Yeah, but then you still have like heinous stock issues with that deck as well because he's 1-1 one, one vanillas which has been well, no, slightly alleviated anymore. now not anymore you i'm still tempted anymore. to run those like they're bondable no no you run them but you no longer have to like triple field them or anything oh yeah no, no, no. that 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 has been improved with with the most recent set um, with this next card actually yes uh this card so let's, so it let's is start a one with zero the vanilla. From the top it is a one zero vanilla it's a 1-0 vanilla. Oh, sure. It's a 1-0 vanilla with the following text. Uh, can't side attack. Can't side attack. Can't side attack. That's three. Can't be bombed. Can't be bombed. Plus 2k power. Yeah, like I said, 1-0 vanilla. And it's a 6k, so straight power creep. That's why it's a power creep. Oh, yeah. Uh, so functionally, yeah, it's going to no. be a 1-0 AK that literally just does not die most of the time for free. <laughs> Woo! So our, our really stupid jokes that we've been making 
Uh, if you don't understand them, it's because there's a Fate Hollow Ataraxia card. Uh, it's, uh, it, it's like Zetheno and Uriel or something like, like that. Thino, Thino and Uriel. It's like Zetheno and Uriel or something like that. Yeah. I don't really know. If you, have, if you have two copies of that card in the back row, then all of your other riders get plus, um, plus 2k and cannot side attack, cannot be bombed. Well, okay, so I, like what it says is uh, if this is if you control at least one other Sotheno and Uriel, this card is a global 1,000 to all archers. So that's where the plus 2k comes from, because you have two of them. Yeah. So each of them gives plus 1k and cannot be bombed, cannot side attack. Uh, no, they, uh, they naturally give cannot be bombed. That's separate from the first effect. Oh, is it? Okay, and they yeah. also naturally give can't, be side attack, uh, can't side attack. So the plus 1k is just from having two. So in plus the worst me. case, you can still have a 1-0 unbombable 6k, uh, but ideally it's 8k, obviously. Yeah, now this card is just... um. It's a 106k vanilla, and you should assume it is one, because your entire deck is based around getting that specific back row, which is fair. Yep. This card is pretty good. Um, I would give it a good rating. It is Wouldn't a good card. Um, it is a very boring card, but it's a very good card, and this is the kind of card that Archer.deck, or not Archer.deck, Archer.deck needs a lot of things to be real. Uh, Rider.deck need, uh, wanted, because... Before you were running clock bondable one ones, and you're still gonna run clock bondable one ones because that one k power difference is absolutely enormous. But uh, it's just a matter of now you have a way to not spend all your stock at level one when you don't want to. Yeah, no, uh, this card is just it's good. It'll probably play a much bigger role than I'm giving it credit for, but I still can only give it a good. All right, Lancer, because he's all also right, in green. So... This is the first of several gay bulges. Uh, it's a 2-1. Uh, he's, uh, I'm just going to say it. He's a clock bomb for characters with a higher level than your opponent's level. So apparently they've decided that like that really, really old Persona card, uh, Adachi skipping out on work, would be a really cool effect to put on a bunch of 2-1s to kill anti uh, as an anti-level. Yeah, no, that's um, it's it's a really good card. One cost to kill any Onodera or any of the uh, the three two sire from girlfriend beta or any of that crap is pretty amazing. Yep. Uh, also, being clock is super super great actually because it means that if they if it's for instance the shining which typically has the um, hand on core stuff in the back row sometimes as well, it lets you get around that as well. Um, so this card is actually really really good and uh, the fact it's green is really irritating because that restricts it to pretty much one or two decks. Uh, uh, the issue only, also being green is like, in deck. you basically, yeah, you can basically only put it in rider.deck, and it's not... I think, I think this is actually one of the meta, one of my meta cards, good meta, uh, because this is just a super solid card that kills a lot of incredibly relevant threats, and... It is a way yeah, to deal like, with Yami as well. Um, it's less good at dealing with Yami, because that deck just says, huh, it's my clock. Well, I, I guess, but... When are they going to have Yami's higher level than their uh, higher level than their level? Uh, Yolo, that's when. Okay, sure, but I I I don't think that's I don't think that's relevant. It it really isn't, but like this card is really good and it's a very good meta choice as well. Um, typically, Rider Up Deck had an issue dealing with the strong early play level threes, and this is a way of getting through those. Mm -hmm. And that is this this is a massive, uh, massive step in that direction at making Rider Up Deck a real threat. Uh, not that it wasn't already. Uh, you but, can just bomb in, bomb into any massive fatties that they expected to live, and they will die. Yep. Next up. Uh, so we've got the second of several gay bulges. Um, oh, oh, this card. Uh, when this is placed on hand stage, mill two. If there are climax cards among those two, choose one of your opponent's characters to get minus five hundred power. Bad card. This card is bad because 500 is not enough. There are cards like, that give minus 500 without a condition. Yeah, you know, like like Kaiki, who will be very relevant in a couple months' time. You hope. I hope. Like uh, what, they can't screw up Mono Gallery worse than they've already screwed it up. Nisekoi two. No, even Nisekoi two would make Mono Gallery better. Disgaea like, two. That would at least. Um. Yeah. Okay. Sure. <laughs> sure. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> They're not going to make bad sets because no one will buy them. No, this card is only bad because minus 500 is not enough and milling 2 is not actually so good that you would run a card with no other effect just to get them mill 2. Anyways, moving on to more Lancers who just can't make it through the end of an episode. 
third gay bog, not actually, it's always killing, always hitting strike. Uh, when this attacks, you may discard a weapon character from your hand and rest a standing green character. If you do, and gay bog, which is the bar, is in the climax zone, you may pay cost. If you do, one of your opponent's characters gets minus 30k. So it's basically like the shittiest swing slayer. Uh, this card is actually pretty good, I think. Um, um, I think it's fine. Brain I think yeah. the issue with it is that it's in green. Um, it's in green, which already has a better bar combo for you to be using. Yeah, it, <laughs> and yeah. that's not even integral. Like, it's not even an integral part of the Rider deck. Why would you put a worse bar combo in? Yeah, not having Rider in the name is always going to be an issue for any card in green in <laughs> in Fate. More or less, unless it's a card that whose power doesn't matter. Exactly. Uh, this card is fine. Um, I, I think it's. I think it's niche. But, I can't give I it think, more than playable. Yeah. I think it's playable because Lancer's eventually going to get something good. Like uh, it's, it's been four sets. The best card he's gotten is a one-one counter. There's going to be like a fake Grand Order set and a fate. It's been four ex, sets. Fate the extra best. Set the or... best card he's gotten in four sets is a one-one counter. Um, I think his best card is actually the stock swap, but sure. But that's an event. Yeah, but it has him on it. <laughs> I guess. Alright, so this card is alright. It's playable to me. Um, Kind Personality Sakura. Uh, why are you in this set? I don't understand. Get out of my set. Kind Personality Sakura. Uh, 2175. When Get Well Visit Every Day is placed to the Climax Zone, which is a green stock soul, I believe. Uh, I think so. You may search your deck for a green character, add it to hand, shuffle your library. And when another green character attacks, this gains 1k for the turn. So, Yo, you can, you can search your Rider Twins with this. This is Isn't a horrible, great? horrible card, because this Isn't is level great? 2, and it's already too late. If you haven't assembled your Twins by level 2, you have already lost. Uh, I would rather play the stock soul by itself than play this card. I agree. Uh, this is a bad card. It's actually just a horrible, horrible trap. It doesn't even have Rider in the name. People are shitters and declare Sakura worst girl despite not playing Heaven's Feel. Uh, so I'm going to just kind of say, no, Sakura is fine. But she has no right to exist in Shira Route. Next. Speaking yep. of... Uh, continuing Battle Lancer. Uh, he got stabbed in the heart, he stood up again. He's pretty manly. Don't know if he's as manly as Garcha, but he's pretty manly. When this becomes reversed, reveal the top card of your library. If it's level 2 or higher, bounce this to your hand. It's a funny effect. <laughs> this card is worse than the, uh, than the Gargantia version of this, which is actually a really good card. I don't um, think you run this. Yeah, neither do I. This doesn't seem good. The traits aren't really that relevant. Despite being level 0, Actually, no, you know what? I would run this in the weapon deck because he looks he, he's pretty manly here. And also, you're running like a crap ton of level twos. We're moving on. Fine. It's a niche card. Uh, Self defense lessens you, Luvia. Uh, if you have another character with Rinna name, this gains 2k and cannot side attack. Wow, this is like a pseudo. This is a pseudo rider card because it has the same buffs if you have a Rin on the field. Cool. This is not good. It's, this is it's, unplayable. It's not on color, it's not on trait. Well, it has gem trait, I guess, but it's, like, fucking awful. It's, you it's... know what? She she um she, uh, contributes to the 2-1 Shiro. Moving on. Because she has gem trait. Moving on. <laughs> Complicated feeling Sakura. Uh, if this is in the front row, it does not stand during your stand phase. It is a 0 and, my god, they printed a worse card than Tono Shiki. How is that possible? I don't know why I even removed the bad stuff. I... How did they print a worse card than Tono Shiki? This is impressive to me. Well, they How? heard they heard your your tears and they felt that they needed to give it spread spread it spread the non, salt. Non comprende. <laughs> this is this is not not okay. Anyways, um, one zero vanilla fifteen hundred counter. This is actually well, playable. It's relevant it's because you didn't yeah, have like, this before. <laughs> yeah, there was not a one zero uh, vanilla counter before uh, in green. And so... now you have one. Yeah, playable. It's, um, actually, it's playable because you can get it with the green uh, uh, green Alcesa clone. And uh, it doesn't cost you stock, which is relevant because it's kind of a stock hunger deck. She's also not master trait. Uh, it doesn't matter. You're playing Archer deck. You only care about color yeah. and or, 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 sorry, rider. You only care about color and rider in the name. That's all you care yeah. about. Next card. 
is a 1 0 Lancer 5 5. The character opposite gains hand on core, and it itself has clock on core. So, too little, too late. Like, it's it's 5 5, it has clock on core, sure, but what does that actually accomplish? The well, answer is nothing. It's it's smaller than, than your 1 0 8K, can't side attack, can't side attack, can't side attack, can't be bombed. Doesn't mm. do anything. More or less. Oh, look, a Shinji. <laughs> so, um, this card is, uh,. I have no idea why you'd put this in your deck unless you were a raging faggot or a slightly, <laughs> a slightly, a slightly less flamboyant faggot. Like, you know what? Card... This is actually good in Red or Dot deck, though. You know that, right? I did... what? Are you why? What? No, I'm wait. Confused. Never mind. Sorry. I thought it, I thought it just gives its effect from experience. I'm I sit, I sit corrected. No. If only. This is it's a two one two K. It's uh, awful. for e for each other Shinji overly self conscious in your level zone. So uh, I think I think I know what card that is, but I'm gonna double check anyway. <laughs> uh, um it, yes, I was correct. It is the zero zero coward runner from the um first unlimited blade work set. For each one of those in your level zone, all your other characters gain five hundred. So um uh, if if it was different and it worked the way I thought it did, I would run it. But it doesn't work the way I thought it did, so it's bad. It's garbage. It's a, it's a card with this guy on it, and it's no. a card with this guy on it. <laughs> Look, Next, this is something that me and the memers of foreign can agree with. This guy is a total asshole. Alrighty, so this event is actually good. Uh, yep. So it's one zero. Choose a green character in clock and add it to hand. Put this in your clock. Yeah, it's yeah, good. It's actually a good it event. Like this grabs is you, grabs you a Rider Twin if it gets into clock at level one, which isn't impossible. And even when you, that doesn't happen, your entire deck is green. So this isn't effectively like it's a, a it's a um, clock swap. A it's a free clock swap. Exactly. And then you can put this into your level zone because you don't it's need an event. it. You don't really need it again. Uh, good card, card, I think. Um, I don't know if that I don't know about good, actually. I think more playable, because it's not like I'd want this card in the deck to begin with. It'd be like, oh, I've got one extra spot. May as well put this in. So I put Sure. I think, it's, I think it's pretty good. I think it helps move the deck further away from have, from people wanting to run the blue cast or fate zero combo to help consistency involving twins. And I think well, that, card... Card is, that card is garbage, because you can't get it with the, um, the green Sakura card. You can't grab it with anything, but that's, yeah, that's the issue. Much. Uh, this archer uh, uh, counter is actually pretty solid, though. Um, the three zero. It's it's brief seed, <laughs> except three zero instead of two one. I'm not convinced. I think this it's playable. Niche. This is niche at best. Like, why? You're already at like ten trillion power. Uh, you need oh no! More. I guess at level three you do need more because you, need more you don't. Level three. So the the thing I see about this is. You're going to not have a field at level three um, in the relevant matchups because your clock kick rider will send everything to a memory. memory. And well, everything that's last... not dead or is dead to memory. Yeah, like your last slot will maybe appreciate this, but at that point you're just hitting, you're pumping it for three k, which is it's not less enough. Less good circumstance. Um, in that yeah. case, and you are in green and you are running the waiver, you do have command seal. Yeah, I'm. I am not sold on this card. I think it fits best into like a a lancer centric deck for flavor. Rider dot deck doesn't really want this. Rider dot deck will have command seal, which is better in a lot of circumstances. I think sometimes you might win this. It's questionable. I don't. I don't, I don't think this is good enough. It's not bondable. It doesn't do anything. It's not bondable in Rider dot deck technically. It's pay to search. Uh, the waiver is waiver event is searchable. This one is not. <laughs> The wafer event is searchable. I don't even know. Like, it's wafer's command seal, right? It's a uh, it's wafer's command seal. That's why it's in green. It's pay to search for command seal. Clock bond. Clock bond to the one one vanilla. Yeah, you, fair enough. You ran that card because it clock bonds your one one vanilla. So if they do happen to kill it, all well, you just get it back. Hmm. Fair enough. Which is why Reddit dot deck is so rude. Quite rude. Quite rude. Man. Um, so this is a very short video, so we can probably just go straight on to red and. Red is a very the... long section, though. That's fine. Three right. videos is less than four for sure. me to have to tag and do things for.
I'm All glad right. you enjoyed this. 48. Yeah. Yep, so next card is Invitation to London, Rin. So, uh, spoilers, they don't die at the end. Who knew? 1045. Oh, good guys won. If you've got three or more other Rin and Art or Archer cards in on the field, it gains 1k power. And when the battle opponent is reversed, if Mischievous Smile is in a climax zone, you may salvage one. So Mischievous Smile is both the blind stock soul from the first set and the uh, targeted stock soul from Waiting Room in this set. Okay, cool. Um, so they keep printing... I'm gonna. This is going to be Mekon clone from now on because it is functionally a Mekon clone, uh, which is no, like... No, it's not. Okay. It is so much worse. It is a lot worse than a Mekon clone. It... Basically, it has the same profile with a shittier climax and without the fun interactions. It's it's not a shittier... I don't think it's a shittier climax. The reason this is nowhere near as good as Mekon is, A, Mekon had a 1-1 support in her relevant deck to make her actually oh, be... All of the Mekon clones are shittier than Mekon because 1-1 support doesn't exist for them. There's also the fact that Mekon only goes into one deck and, like, she there's only one deck which would ever want her and she does well in that deck, whereas there are multiple decks that actually Might want this effect... This. Sure. But in reality, you need to go so heavy on Rin and Archer that you're never going to run it in anything but Rin and Archer. That's it. Rin and uh, Archer deck might approve. Uh, I don't know the issue is going to be reversing things. Heavily. I don't think they would approve. Like you have to hit level one first for this to do I anything. I wish it was a gate. I really you don't. can't even you can't even run the Shiro's Married Life because that card doesn't have Rin or Archer in name. See? So in reality, it doesn't give any power. That's so sad. It is really sad. They um, keep they keep printing this profile. Thinking it's like, hey, Mekon was pretty good. Maybe we can just keep printing the effect and other people will approve as well. But it's like, Mekon no. was only good because of the other interactions, not just because of her own profile. This card is inexplicably expensive on Yuyute. I don't believe it's a good card at all. I think that the only... Um, I think it's only... playable, but... The... No, I, it's, it's very niche to me. Uh, yes, you can occasionally get a reverse off, but there's a couple of problems there. The first is that you're playing Stock Souls in a deck that probably wanted two plus two souls, which means you're eating into gate space, or else you're running running less um uh, you're running you're running fewer on either of those climaxes, which, which is you don't not want. good. And I don't think that's good. The second part is uh if you play this, you'll probably like this card is good in English because you'll be able to play this and then you'll get to play the level three Rin and Archer in this set. Because that gives you four stock souls, four gates. Yeah, which is sure, sure. Like, you know, it's like whatever, but in the Japanese game, which is what we're playing, I don't think this card has much of a place. I would, I would actually rather go minus by playing the um, the uh, Collider Ruby combo. Oh, okay, than sure, sure. I, I agree. I think Collider Ruby is better than this still. I know that you have like no hand at the end, but well, you have Clock what, Encore. Whatever. So you have Clock Encore, and you can still. No, I, I just don't think... Yeah, you have Clock Encore still. I think, I think Collider Ruby is better than this. I think this is still playable. I think Boucher Road still doesn't understand why Mekon was so good. Um, thinking it was just the fact that it was a vanilla with a Climax combo that also got pluses for free. Um, uh, you could just consider Bushy Roads printing these as, like... Because a... the funniest part was Mekon was a rare, and every other version has been a double rare. Yeah, and every other version has been worse. Worse aside. than the Mekon. Yeah. Um, I just don't think this card is very good because A, the Climax doesn't give power, B, it's very restrictive in getting to 5-5, five five. and lastly, it, like, it, the Climaxes don't fit for the Japanese build. I just don't think this card is good. I think you're running two souls, so we're going to move on. Um, so this card is inexplicably cheap because look at him, he's so gar. It's like oh 400, 400 yen on Yute, that's way too cheap. Um, so he's a 2 on 3k support. All of your other weapon or gem traits gain 1k. Rest the standing character. When raw uh, IS... It's, it's the anti-burn. Okay. Yes. When raw IS, the stock soul, stock soul. Uh, red one, is placed in your climax zone, you may pay cost. If you do, put the top seven cards of your library under this as marker. And then at the beginning of your opponent's draw phase, so, yeah, draw phase as opposed to attack phase. Which is the put, shittiest timing. Is it, though? Um, it can be. Depends on what deck it's, you're playing against. It's very context-dependent, I think. Uh, at the beginning of their draw phase, you put all the markers under this in the waiting room, and if there was a climax in those markers, this gains your opponent's auto-abilities do not do damage to you for the turn. So, a couple of things. One, you are almost 90% likely to hit a climax when you hit 7 if you have, like, moderate to okay compression. Like, mm -hmm. 
that's probably going to happen. And if it doesn't happen, well, that's seven damage you're definitely not taking. So you're so okay with that. <laughs> that is so swag. I love it. Um, I still can't give it any more than a niche rating. He's like doing everything the Shiro does, except he's doing it more efficiently and without a cost. Yes. <laughs> and he's also got an effect that works when he's not in the front row that your opponent can't play around. So he's just like a more efficient... Uh, matured version of Shiro, and that flavor is awesome, but the card itself is bad. Like, I, I can only give it a niche. I don't think it's, it's bad. Not, it's not full-on bad. It's just, like, the timing is super awkward. Against some decks, that timing just makes or breaks the card. I love how Japan, like, some um, some uh, brick-and-mortar stores were buying this for 10 yen each. <laughs> what? Cause, yeah, they were buying this card for 10 yen. Holy Jesus. Yeah. They, okay. they don't have much of an opinion on it, and to be honest, I don't think it's very playable in a meta deck, but it is freaking cool. His clothes are as impossible as ever. Well, yeah. Yep. So, must, must and Servant, Rinnacha, uh, 3 2 10k. It's a heal, and when this attacks, if Last Words is in the Climax Zone, you may pay 1. If you do, deal 1 damage, and this game's 3k power it's for the, the turn. the gate, right? Uh, yes, it is the gate. Okay, so... And if so this card is basically Bouchard saying, you don't need that old Ridden Archer, here, have a new one. Uh, I think that this card is, like, let's ignore the fact that gates are bad right now. This is Bushiro's attempt at making people play gates and then also play, like, diversify for their stock soul. Because most decks want some number of gates if they have access to them in red. Sure. And this is one way to get there, I guess. I don't think this card is as good as Rin and Archer because Rin and Archer is ridiculous. And this card is only okay. Like, it is the best finisher for the English release because the old Rin just kind of sucked. So, here's my point. Is is my Akari from Terraformers power creep by this? Uh, no, because this doesn't salvage. Sweet. <laughs> and this this also doesn't come in early, but the come in early... Uh, you never come in Akari's. early with Akari, what the pretty terrible yeah well, um, like you could it's just like two two <laughs> minus two to hand to get to field early but like akari salvages and has a less restrictive trait uh ridden archer i guess has every trait you'd ever want except for the word rider in the name it's got master, <laughs> <laughs> master servant weapon rider master servant rin and master servant rin and archer master servant uh, rin archer and rider it doesn't have weapon trait, so again, uh, same problem with Rin and Archer. The Archer Brainstorm cannot get this card. Uh, uh, but Vimana can. That, but Vimana can. Yeah. And you will run Vimana in Rin and Archer deck. No, you don't. Just like one I, or two of. No, you don't. It's a way to get Rin and Archer. I, it's a way to get Rin and Archer for free. No, you don't. What? Are you just going to like spam a little Brainstorm until you hit it? Yes. <laughs> Because you have the stock, or you draw it naturally. You uh, also have the Rin brainstorm to get it. Like, anyways, this yeah. card is this card is still good. Um, it's not as good as Rin Archer. Um, this will be your budget Rin Archer if you don't have OG Rin Archer. It's, actually, it's more expensive than the old Rin Archer. Wait, though. what? It's well, twelve eighty. Okay. It's or easier to find than OG Rin Archer, I guess. OG Rin Archer is only seven eighty still, I think. Well, that's because it was an uncommon. Seven eighty uncommon is pretty good. Whereas this card is, yep, seventeen eighty. So this oh, is budget. Oh Jesus! Or... This is even budget Rin Archer. Well, no. If you can't find OG Rin Archer, this is your less ex less less value alternative in all fronts. Uh, yeah, un unfortunately, yeah. So uh, it's seven eighty sold out. Whereas the new Rin and Archer is seventeen eighty with like infinite stock because it's a new set. Unfortunately, the card is still good in my mind. It's just not Rin Archer. Hmm. And that's, that's again, the common trend for every finisher in Fate. It's good. It's fine. It's Musashi. It's still not Rin and Archer. Yeah. Like, Rin and Archer even gave you, like, more stock to play Musashi and stuff the next turn. Or Rider Clock Kicks or whatever. Or just Compress. Whereas this card is, like, it asks a lot. And its payoff is not actually that huge. Yeah. It's pretty whatever. Um, moving on. So, top tier Magician Rin. Zero zero five hundred assist five hundred and resonance one cost reveal a Khaled Bolg two from your hand. Khaled Bolg is a Chihaya's camera clone. Uh, so you check the top card, four cards of your deck, choose one red character, uh, or one I think it's one red character. Uh, I'll have a look. 
Let's it see. is choose one, yeah, choose one red character, add it to your hand, and dump the rest. So I talk about this event now because it's relevant for a crap ton of cards. Yes, it is. This, yeah, um, and that's that's fine. Like one cost reveal color bulk to plus. That's pretty um, good. You salvage the above Ren Archer. So this is like the other reason why you'd run the above Ren Archer over OG Ren Archer. It's yeah, way it's easier target. to get. It's a, it's a plusing target, basically. Yeah, it's, it's um, way easier so, to get. This is like a worse version, though, of the um, uh, Resonance for uh, one. The, mm. uh, what's... Shi Shining Resonance. The Shining one, yeah. The yeah. Shining... It's a worse version because it draws from the waiting room on a level zero, which you, uh, which is one of the points where you really want it. But at the same time, like drawing from the waiting room is a good thing later on, especially when you want to get a ridden archer before refresh. Well, uh, part of what also makes it awkward though is, um, I think the Ricky is probably a little bit more effective than the Junketsu event because the Ricky can be played to grab another Ricky to keep your resonance alive, and you cannot do that with Khaled Bolg, which means you're probably sitting on it for a long time. Ricky for Ricky sucks. It does suck, but sometimes you need the attacker. Oh, so Khaled Bog is bondable. Well, I'm not saying Khaled Bog is bad. It's just Khaled Bog needs to be drawn. No, it doesn't. It can be bonded. Oh, can it? Oh, yeah. Everything I was saying is a lie. Yeah, it's bonded by a good character as well. <laughs> okay, so, never yeah. mind. Every, everything um, is resolved. This is just better yeah. at level 2. It's it's a lot worse at level 0 and 1. Yeah, the only reason I'm even considering this Khaled Bog build over the old Rinacha build is because it's bondable by a good character. Uh, but at the same time, there's a card that we're about to talk about, which makes the old build so, so much better. This card is still good for me. Um, yeah, no, that card is fine. It's still um, good. Yeah, I, it's I, fine. Like, it, it does everything you want it to do. Next. No, it doesn't. It, it well, forces okay. you to run a bunch of events. It forces so you to run a bunch everything. of events, but I like those events. So, yeah, I don't the know. events is fine. So, the know. success of Tosaka Rin. Um, this is my meta card. Uh, so, it's good and meta. When this is placed from hand to stage, you reveal the top card of your library. If it's a character with either Rin or Archer name, add it to hand and drop a card from hand to waiting room. And then the second ability is to start up. One cost, tap two characters. Choose a character with Archer name, and that character gains the following ability. When the battle opponent of this is reversed, you may choose a character in your waiting room and add it to your hand. So this card is great. Um, yeah, it's this is pretty super good. solid. Um, there are some really stupid anti-synergies um, with this card. The first one is... If you run this deck, if you run this card in the new Calibolg centric Rin Archer deck, that means you're running three to four Calibolg events. <laughs> and at that point, if you reveal one of these, this ceases to function as a discard outlet, which is really annoying. And secondly, there's not really a good archer that um you can put the second ability on to kill something, except for there's a couple. There's the uh one zero uh Isn't there like a promo one that's like seven K or something? Uh no, it's more I was talking about the uh the bomb from Fate Zero. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a good one to that's, put on. That's there's a great also, one. There's a level one bomb archer in this set, which uh, requires you to resonate a uh, <clears throat> resonate a Calibol to become a level one bomb. Which has the uh, previously mentioned issues. Yep. And then there's a 1175 archer from the old. There's 1175 and 106k archer from the set just before. Uh, this card is great if you get to level one first, and then you can pay one, tap two characters, and then you have a one cost plus. plus. Yeah, I, so, I think um, the best card to combo this with is definitely the Fate Zero Archer. Um, for those who don't know, it's a 1-0, uh, I think it's like 3-5 hand on core. Climax combo with any red Climax to become a cost 1 bomb. Yeah, uh, cost 0 bomb. Is I think it cost it 0? I could have sworn it was cost. Dang, can't even beat... Okay, Kigant Shooter is always going to be a special snowflake. Um, <laughs> yeah, you and your special snowflake. Uh, it is a... Let me have a look. Yeah, man, that it is a, a... That's officially legit... Oh, no, you're correct. It is cost one or lower. Right, it's sweet. a 1045. One so it's oh, a 1045. All right. Um, that card is pretty good. But again, uh, this encourages, like, this is great in the old Rin and Archer build, except for the fact that it's not. It requires a red climax, and the red climax you're playing at level one is going to deplete your hand so hard. So this kind of sort of makes up for that, but not really. Because if you're slapping it on something which, um, like a cost bomb or. Um, or level one bomb, then you're losing hand and field again. They're functionally, <laughs> well, you can you're going, compensate you're by using the clock bond. It's neg one stock for. You can um, use, a, you can use the clock zero. avenger for Rin archer to uh, to kind of. Clock avenger. The avenger for Rin archer. 
why would you do that when you have a Rin that just gives all your Rin and Archer that, clock on call? That's what I'm talking about specifically, the Avenger for Rin and Archer. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I'm just referring to it as an Avenger profile. I don't think taking a crap ton of damage is a great idea. I mean, but, you um, can basically just say, like, pay one, clock yourself, plus, I guess. And there are sets that'll do that. I still think the major draw of this card is it's a discard outlet that doesn't require you to have the Rin and Archer... Um, doesn't require you to hit climaxes or have the Rin and, um, or have the Clyder Ruby climax, and the second ability has occasional usage with the um, the old best wine archer or is I can't remember his name Golden King or uh, I think it's Golden King yeah the Golden King archer or um, like it incentivizes oh, you King to of run. all creation. Are you sure about that? I'm sixty percent sure. That's like the level three, isn't it? Oh, I am talking about the level three though. Right, I thought you were. Which one are we talking I'm talk about? I'm talking about the one zero. All right, let me see. The one zero cost bomb is what I'm talking about. Yes, it is. I'm pretty sure it's gold. Yeah, it's Golden King. Yep, yep. So that's the card I was talking about. Um, it also incentivizes you to put out, like, you don't have to run Collider Ruby itself heavily anymore. You can just play a bunch of archers and hope that you kill things and have this in the back row. I mean, the issue again, another issue with this is that it clashes with your 1-1 one, one, uh, Gandhir Shooter Rin for the late game. But at that point, you should probably already have what you need, and you can just use a Brainstorm to shore it up. And at that point, this card is still a come and play top check this card, which is still really strong. Yeah, I mean, uh, there are decks that will just run this profile regardless, without the second effect. Uh, I know I do in some of my decks, just because I think the free filter is just super worthwhile, always. Mm-hmm. Yep. On um, worst case, uh, if you reveal a climax, if you have a spammable brainstorm, you can turn that into a filter, anyways. Yep, more or less. Uh, so I think that's a good meta card, but we can move on. I guess. I think it's a good card. I don't sure. know if it's full meta, but I don't know that how many actual meta cards are in this set. Cause... I have like three, maybe. Uh, so this card, Storm of Counterattacks Archer, is actually quite interesting, and it's another incentive to run the Kellerbog build. When you play this from hand to stage, choose a character. That card gains 1k for the turn. So this is most notable for pumping your double R one zero stock soul rin. Uh, you also get to pump it like an archer in order to get it over something. So you can use the rin that we just talked about and get a more, uh, more a safer value. plus. Yeah, a safer plus, basically. Yep. Um, but more importantly, this has resonance. Reveal a Calibol 2 from your hand. At your climax phase, if this is in the front row, you may pay cost. If you do, choose a level 0 or lower character in your opponent's front row kill and it. kill it. Yep, so it's, it kills runners, basically. It's uh, I think it's great. I think this card is really good. I don't think I'd run more than two, probably. Maybe three. I'd probably run just two, because killing runners is nice, but it's not something you need to do absolutely every game. Yeah. Uh, this card does have some value outside of that. Like, it still kills level zeros going into the, like, the mid-game, so you can just get a free... Like, put this in the front row, put this opposite the level zero. And then get uh, that extra can't damage kill. In. And then, yeah, get, one, get extra damage in. I mean, you do leave some to be reversed next turn, but whatever, you've got some extra damage. I still think the card uh, is good. Like, this, card, this card is just straight up good. It's a good incentive to run the Calibog build. Uh, run 3, 4 Calibog to get this uh, more frequently. Uh, yeah, I, I can't really say anything bad about it. The 1K is quite relevant to pump archers, like I said, as well as the 1-0 Yep. And, yeah, well, it also, um, it's no notable that it pumps the 3-2 uh, the Advanced Summon from the old Unlimited Bladeworks set. Because that card is just kind of piddly. It's like kind of small, and 1k does go a long way. Yep. Next. Yep. So next card, Calibog 2 Archer. So <laughs> when you play Calibog 2 once a turn, you may give a character 2k, and then it's level 0 bomb. Uh, the first effect is whatever. <laughs> um, the this second effect is, so is also whatever, because you have a better level, level 0 bomb. It's not actually better. You don't think I mean, the other level 0 bomb is better? It's better if you run something that it resonates with, but otherwise it's not actually better, I don't think. I don't know. I'd be tempted to just even splash for Kiritsugu to an extent. Um, no, I think the Unlimited Bladeworks bomb is just better, isn't I'm, it? I'm talking about the like, yeah, I think the Ren one is better, right? What does it do again? It had enough effect. I think it was a Resonance or Target or something. Oh! Uh, it got no, to pump archers! Yeah, you tap and pump an archer for 1-5. Oh man, we're going back to the synergy, boys. But that card, it's not synergy, because you have to tap it. <laughs> yeah, sad days. Well, That card is still probably better than this I one, think I think. I think it's still better, yeah. Because, um, yeah, it's a level 0 bomb, and doesn't require, it doesn't, like, 
I think it's other effects in their niche than this one. Yep. Yes, you get 2k, like, okay, sure, you get 2k on one of your 1 0 double R rings for playing Color Bowl. I mean, sometimes but... you'll um, also just use it for pumping uh, an archer to get the plus off the. Uh... The Rin tap. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course. Um, so it, it depends on how you have the deck constructed, uh, which one is better, I think. The more we talk about, the more I kind of like this card. I, I still think, think it's only playable. playable. It's only playable. I, I don't know if I want to change all the way to the Calibog build, even though milling is great, but yeah, whatever. I think even with the Calibog build, I'm probably still going to run like OG. I would still run OG or an Archer. Like, that card is just way too good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Especially of because Colored Bulg is now another way to get it to your hand without having to necessarily exactly. run for mana. Um, yeah, the mana sucks, man. What? Um, it's a plus one if you don't plus fuck one. up. Yeah, but it takes up so much room. But you only need two. You only need two. How does it take up so much room? Because you don't... Those two slots are actually quite valuable. I guess. Uh, there are better cards to run. <laughs> uh, support Fire, what, like 1-0... One it's a one zero four k when this attacks, choose another character with Master or Servant. That character gains 1k for the turn. Again, you pump an Archer, you pump a Rin. That's pretty cool. And Resonance, reveal a Calibog 2 from your hand. When this becomes reversed, the level of the battle opponent is level 1 or lower. You can turn this into a level 1 bomb. Uh, I think this is also playable. Uh, I think this is good. It's incentive to run the um, to, to run Calibog 2. Level 1 bombs are a little weaker nowadays, but they're still really good. And there's, this is a 4k bomb. It's, uh, uh, it it's might... very, very good when you're playing against, like, girlfriends, I guess. Yeah. Uh, uh, your mileage something, will vary. <laughs> something notable is that um, it's not always level 1 bomb. Uh, so if you are... Uh, no, what, what am I saying? Like, it, you can leave it as a 104k uh, without bombing anything, and then your opponent attacks in, praying you don't have... Mind uh, games. Calibog. Yeah, and then you leave an empty space in the field, because you did have Calibog too. Hooray! Um... But yeah. that can be played around pretty easily. It's it's fine. It's like, nothing wrong I think with it's that. still just a playable card. I think there are too many circumstances which make like level one bombs are not hard to play around as it is, and yeah, I think I... Uh, putting it on a condition makes it a little bit less reliable than I would normally like. Uh, the one K yeah, pump is really nice though, especially when using 1K it with pump the, is good. the zero zero. Yeah. So all the power gain, all the incidental power gain is super good. I definitely think yeah. There's a lot more of it than um I thought when I first uh, saw the set fragmented. So. I still don't think the one zero double R is very good, but at least it's somewhat playable. <laughs> All the fragmented uh, power gain is like making a bunch of cards better in general. Uh, in particular, I'm still looking at the zero zero back row. Uh, the the it's not a back row because you can just tap any two characters. Well, I mean, it's it's an assist, so. Which one? Oh, sorry, it's not an assist. It's a filter. Never mind. But I, that card is getting better in my. Yeah, mind. yeah, that card that card gets better and better because it's like one of the best red cards in All the right, set. All right, next up. One, um, one. Smart and cute on a student ring. It's a one one six five. If you've got another weapon character, this goes up to 8k. And when this is placed from hand to stage, check the top card of your deck. If it's not master or servant, this card, um, that card goes to clock. I don't like this card. I like that effect a lot uh, level zero. I don't like that effect as much at level one. It's got the or secret auto ability. This can be bombed. Uh, yes, like most things. Uh, I think the incentive to run 1-1s one is to not lose outright to that new 1-1 one, one profile that says if it's Costless, <coughs> Costless character in front of this, uh, it's, it's enormous. I don't even like this card, though, because, uh, one, you're running a bunch of the top check ring, which means you're incentivized <coughs> to run Archer beaters, and there's a one one seven five Archer with basically no condition in the old set. Yeah, I don't think so this card is very good. You're better off running that one. Plus, this one is like, yeah, you have clock on core, so yeah, it's bombable. But at least that one, you can slap a. I'm. Um, hmm? I'm actually gonna give this card a bad rating. Uh, I think this card could actively lead to your loss um, by putting it in your deck over other options. Um, that's a convincing argument, especially because like, uh, there's the top check and it goes to clock rather than tapping this. And I think this yeah, could no. actively lead to a loss. Um, it's almost always a one one eight k though. I, th I it's so rare that we hit a card that can that we can I can honestly say yeah you you could actually lose because you put this card into your deck. This is definitely one of them. Another issue that I have is one ones in this deck in particular aren't that great because you're going to replace them with hopefully um, two two nine fives that salvage when they come to play. Yeah. Uh, so you'd need a a strong reason to run some uh, to run a one Cost one characters and, early. Yeah, that strong reason is probably to have the archer name to sometimes salvage. I mean that's that sucks as well because you have to pay one in order to get the salvage at all. But uh, 
and then you so you ended up paying two for the salvage effect but yeah the more i talk about that the worse it sounds uh so this card i just don't think has a role simply because it gets outclassed so soon and because like you said the clocking bit can add damage that isn't necessary and yeah it's bombable and if it was a zero zero with this kind of profile like it would be playable but because it's a one one in my mind it's just a bad card I'm still calling it niche because I don't think it's actively bad. I just think it can sometimes not be great. So they're taking up some really, really pride. Like if I'm going to say Vimana takes up real estate, then this definitely takes up real estate. At least it's Master Servant, um, which means it's, that they did intend this to go into the Rin Shiro uh, Saber deck. She's, she's Master Gem. Is it Master? No, no, the, the trait she checks for. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, she checks for Master Servant. That's yeah. right. So that's a little bit relevant, but... I it's, still think it's, so. in, it's probably intended to go into the Shiro Saber yeah. Rin deck yeah. because both Saber and Shiro have weapon trait as opposed to needing Archer specifically. Yep. Who is also weapon trait for that matter. But he's also Servant. Yep. Uh, dual wield Archer. 3295. Uh, I don't like this card. When this is placed from hand to stage, you may pay cost, which is discard a card. If you do, choose a weapon character in your hand equal to or lower than your level and put it on any slot on stage. So you just minus two to get another character. Cool. Mm -hmm. So functionally, uh, it's uh, it's because the the it's way not they minus two, it's minus one. It's minus one. The the way they budget things is a, a card in hand is worth roughly two stock. So functionally speaking, if you use it to drop a level three, you ditch another card instead of paying two stock. That's well, the nice. way Boost Road budgets things, um, cost wise. Uh, the second ability is also a minus. When this is placed from hand to stage, you may pay cost, which is discard another card. If you do, choose one of your opponent's level 3 or lower characters in the front row and kill it. I don't hate this. I think it's niche. Um... Uh, I think it's very circumstantial, but it is a very nice option to have. Just straight up kill a level 3. I think the issue for me is that most level 3s these days are one-offs. Um, yeah, like they come and play heal, come and play clock kick, come and play Musashi, and or then, else they're and then it untargetable. Matter. And then it doesn't matter. Um, yeah, like, the like only the set I see this card being super relevant against is, again, Girlfriend's Blue, because yeah, then you can kill Beta. their pumpkins. Yeah, kill, no, you can kill their 4K Sire. That's well, the, you'll kill their you, 4K Sires, but you'll also kill their pumpkins, which means they can't you, burn you on their, uh, your turn. So yeah, the, that is true, actually. This yeah, has good targets can. against that deck. Yes. Um... um Let's just clarify the first ability. You are placing a character from hand to stage. <clears throat> Sorry. So if you place like a Musashi or a heal, you will get the heal effect or the Musashi effect. Yep. Because uh, those effects don't say when this is played, but when this is placed from. Um, Correct. Playing is um, the act of enabling cost and stage. playing the card from hand. Um, placing is just putting it onto the field uh, from somewhere. So. I I think the card is still niche. I can't give it more than a niche rating. Um, maybe one or two of uh, for specific matchups. It's it's Archer. Definitely not two of. Definitely not two of. Maybe. Probably one of. Uh, it, it's mostly going to be used in like, okay, that's a girlfriend's player. I can My deck can just blow him out uh, between 1-0, cost 1 bombs, and level 1 bombs uh, that are clock on Corporal, so they just it's, keep it's coming just... back. And... Uh, this to blow one off. out, this to blow out like pumpkin or something. Um, Definitely a solid one of, but I don't know what deck this goes into because the Rin and Archer deck, like the Rin and Archer deck, doesn't get much mileage off the first ability at all. Like no. it gets a couple heals, whereas putting a Musashi in, like what deck is that? The weapon deck. I mean, I guess you can still jam it sort of into the weapon deck. Eh. Well, I mean, Fate Stay has a lot more support for weapon than than UBW does. Mm, but well, they're adding a lot more now. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think the second ability is the main draw. The first ability is just incidental flavor text. Um, I'm gonna leave it at niche. I I don't know. I think it's playable, just not at more than one of. I think the circumstances with which this becomes playable are super niche. Um. Because there, there's not very many times where I'd actively want to play this card. I do agree. But uh, when it does, it when can it does, be. it's great. Like yeah, can be a blowout. You you have the potential to just make a dude real sad. Yep. So ideal existence archer is a zero zero five hundred. This is the one cost colored bog bond, and its other ability is rest two characters, uh, with master or servant, and then a character gains two k. Yep. Good card. Um. 
this is actually quite a good card, yeah. It um, uh, pumps up. It pumps your one zero rin, so you can make a big enough kill things. Kill things. Um. It, pu it pumps your archers in the case that, um, where no, that doesn't work because you have to tap two characters. No, no never it does mind. not work it, with that. It, it just pumps. Uh, it just pumps the, that that double R rin. Um, yeah. Uh, also, your early all... plays. It'll pump your early yeah. plays, but because uh, yeah. your back row is largely going to be either a brainstormer plus uh, rin archer shooter. Uh, avenger edition. No, no, it'll be Gandhi shooter. Or Ga some. yeah, Gondor Shooter as well. Uh, sometimes you won't be able to use this effect because Gondor Shooter rests. This card is only really valuable at level one, um, but it is quite good at level one because it does um, enable bosses. Yeah. Also, the the pay one bond to Khaled Bull two is super good uh, if you're running that. That's gonna be the main reason why you're running this card in my mind. It's because you want pay one take a red character from the top four cards of your um, deck, or pay one enable resonance. Exactly. So it's it's good. It's it's a good card. Um, it's good total. Yeah. It's not like it's it's just good. Uh, I no, it's fine. Like that's all I got. It, it's good in the in the relevant deck. Yeah, and it's very good. It's very deck. very good in that deck. It gets a little outclassed soon, but that's all right because. I mean, yeah, it, I, ideally Gundia you're just getting the reversing is, and you're moving on. Yeah, more or less. Gundia shooter is like whatever. Next. Um. Gem Magic Rin, 0025. You have one or few other characters. It becomes a 4K. Yeah. yeah. Playable. It's playable, yeah. Whatever. It's boring and playable. Yep. So, next card Complicated Feelings Rin. It is a 1 0 counter. It is a 1 1K counter, so it has a secondary effect. Discard two cards from your hand to the waiting room. When you use the backup, you may pay cost. If you do, kill a oh, dear God. character whose level is higher than the opponent and put in the waiting room. Well, this is better than the other ones. This one doesn't require you to ditch two specific character no, no, no. traits. The only, the only other anti-change counter that has this clause is the same. The only two others. I'm, I there are two say. others. Yeah. Um, there's one in Tulavru, and I think there's one in... Dog days, in I Two Love Rue, you have to ditch two characters uh, with days. alien yeah. traits. It's just two, two characters. No, 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 you don't. I thought it did. No, you don't. Oh. It's any two any two cards. Oh, it's still awful. Oh, You're sorry, it's the change effects that change require... Yeah. No, this is still a bad cost. effect. This is still not great. You're going hype and neg. Like, it's not good. <laughs> you're, you're minusing three to kill, dude. Like... It is... It is... Uh, you're three yeah, for, it is you're, effectively you're, minus three. Because 1k is not going to counter anything. You, you're three for one here. You're, you're three for one and... I don't even think that's Sometimes worth it. you three for two, but you're usually three I, for one. -ing. I literally don't think this is worth it. I would rather let them have Sire, and then I'd rather play this counter down and ram into Sire with it than three for one myself, even if I had two climaxes in hand. Uh, I think this is a bad card. I think this anti change profile is bad, and I think it's just too much of a neg. I think it's a huge trap, but I also don't <laughs> think it's so bad that I can call it bad. I think it's a very low niche card. Oh, I don't think bad. I've ever run it, though. I mean, the reason why, like, going neg for the 2-1 Goshitoge is okay is because, one, stock isn't, like, the greatest real neg, not, and two, not, second character is not a real sec minus. Goshitoge's only real effect is second character. Nothing else is relevant. Mm-hmm. Next. Yeah, all kinds of follow-ups. Archer, 1035. Uh, this is a uh, Akashi clone. All your other characters with Renal Archer name gain 500 power, 2 cost tap this, salvage a Renal Archer. So this kind of vacuum is fine, but I don't in think context, you, you don't play it. it. You don't play this at all because you have Gender Shooter Rin. Back row real estate is just so so valuable. Between Gender Shooter Rin, uh, giving your stuff Clock Encore, which is not always going to be relevant, but sometimes you want that effect. Uh, a brainstormer, you just don't have space for this card. Yeah, I agree. You don't ever have the opportunity to tap him and pay two, and the plus five hundred to everything is cute, but not great. So, uh, it's playable, but, like, you're not going to play it. I think it's niche. Like, I, I really don't think there's room for it. There's no room for it in the only deck that wants to play it, in my opinion. Well, next up, number 62. It's another archer. His... Aftermath of the battle? Yeah, what oh. does he do? Whoops. My, my, my image has disappeared. One second. Oh, no. Um, okay, so what he does there is... They're back. He is a 1-0... Uh, 105k. When it's placed from hand to stage, it gains X power, where X is 500 times the number of masters and servants you have. So it's like a 1075 for a turn. I... This is this is really good with the top checker. Hmm. 
this is really good with the top uh, check. Sure. I, I historically don't like this effect, though. Yeah, I, I think it's only good with the top checker. Otherwise, it's just incredibly mediocre. And at that point, you, like, why are you running this card? It's not amazing. It's uh, like maybe niche playable. Um, I if don't. If it got power when it attacked, this card would be amazing. But it doesn't. So clock onker on this doesn't mean. <coughs> it's, it's also not bondable, which is meh. Yeah. Oh. Whoa. That was weird. Yeah. Okay. No. Um. This card I think is playable, but I also can't see where I'd want to play more than one of it. I don't think I'd put any in my decks. Um. Yeah, next card is, I guess, yep. full power pitch. So this card is great. It's um, it's very unfortunate because there's already another good Shiro Sabre Rin support. But this one is really good as well. It's a 2-1, uh, 1k, so something's up. All of your other Shiro Sabre and Rin gain 500 power. That's not the draw to this card. The real draw is tap this, Choose a character in your waiting room with Shiro, Saber, or Rin in name, and put it in stock. So it's basically super duper free compression. In fact, it's so free, they're paying you for it. Um... I think my favorite thing to do with this card might actually be to cheat it in with Kaleido Ruby. And just start immediately at level compressing? level one. Yeah, just going nuts compression at level one. Even though you go like heavy neg, that <laughs> seems like something I would... Seems like something I'd love to do, because I'm a scummy person who still believes in compression. Um, not to mention it's still a decent support at that point. It doesn't get superseded by anything. Um, um, the, the major issue with this is that it conflicts with your Gandia Shooter Rin. Um, so not only can you not tap two characters to do anything, but... Um, yeah, no, that's like, actually just the main it's issue. It's the main issue. Um, I think it's playable. I think it's a lot better in the Rin Shiro Archer deck where you also run the Shiro that gives power and soul, and then suddenly yeah, things are really funny. Yeah, but in that deck, you also run Gandhi Shooter because you have way more than enough masters. Well, YOLO, you need more stock. So I love this card, but it's a victim of circumstance because there's think, nowhere I'd like to run it. I think ultimately it's still a niche card. Uh, but hey, if you find the perfect niche for it, like, I can't see this card being bad. This card is so swag. Like, it's great in a Rin Waifu deck, surely. There's some someone out there that's going to make this card work because it's so good. What? But, like, Rin Waifu deck, you're already running Gander Shooter Rin. But this card is so good. I think I'd rather have two of this in back row than Gunder Shooter Rin. Okay, so instead of like making your opponent take one damage, you'd just rather not take two damage after you refresh. Let's this go. It's so good. I love this card. Uh, let's go. Yeah, let's. Uh, like, I want to call it good because I just love <laughs> sure, this card. Sure, we're going to put so a good much. rating for you, but it's still a niche card in my mind. Mm, imagine if it was a 1 1. Ooh, yeah. strong card. Uh, so next card's vanilla. Bad. Yeah. I need to uh, update the rating. Uh, you can read the flavor text, I guess. Holy I've been working Jesus. hard to not be as eccentric like you. He will work hard to learn to like himself, I think. That's this a... is her talking to Archer, for yeah, the record. This is a lot of flavor text. Okay, yeah. mo moving yeah. on. Frontal Assault Rin, 2175. Uh, discard a red card from your hand to the waiting room encore. So that's a very interesting encore cost. Instead of discarding a character or Climax, you discard a red card. So any card in your hand Climax becomes... Encores are super rare. Yeah, there's, there's like one yeah, somewhere. I forgot so... where it is. Uh, Resonance, reveal a Calibolt 2 from your hand. When this becomes reversed, if the level of the battle opponent of this is higher than the level of the opponent, you may pay cost, which is reveal a Calibolt 2 from your hand. If so, <clears> reverse the battle opponent. This is joining the list of the 2-1 anti-change reversers. Uh, this is enormously good and is one of the main reasons you'd ever want to play Color Bowl. Yeah, it's, it's a really good card. Um, just kicks, like, Rin and Archie Dot deck didn't really have a way to kick the ass of advanced summons like Onodera and Saya and all of them. So this card does that very, very well and is one of the best red cards, I, I think. I think it's good. I don't think it's one of the best, per se. I think you still run two, probably. I think it's possible now with all the incidental power gain to actually get your early plays over some of their stuff. Not Saya. Uh, Not Saya, and that's one of the important ones. That's one of the important ones, but definitely over Onodera, at least at this point. Onodera usually has a level support or some sort of plus 2k support nowadays. It's very so, hard to get over it. I still I think really the card is fine. Yeah, I really think this is the reason to run Calibolg. This and... um. Just all the incidental good stuff that Color Bowl does. Like, like, Color Bowl just gives you a lot of good cards to work with, and it's itself like a very playable card. So I think like Color Bowl is a perfectly fine build around me card. I'm actually going to give this a 
Uh, I think this is the first common card I'll ever give the meta rating to. Is it good or is it just playable? Just playable. Okay. This card is this card is very very strong, but it's not like oh I want to play this deck because I have a way to deal with advanced summons. No, you yeah. you play it because you play it in the deck card you decide to play the deck, but it is extremely good. I think. Alrighty, moving on is a two two, and his sword two, two, is eight, cracked. Both uh, are cracked. It's your it's your favorite card. Oh no. When this plays from hand to stage, choose a standing green archer and tap it. If the level of the character opposite is three or higher, this gains three k power. Just put it to battery. Yeah, you you can you can do whatever you want with it. I don't think this card is worth it at all. All right. So historically, and I already disliked the two one version, right? And usually the two one. Two soul. It was two soul. It's, yeah, most of the two one versions have two soul too because they gain soul when they're facing a level three. Let's be real. Uh, and this sure. isn't even any bigger than the two one ones. Like maybe five hundred power. Like it's like no, no. No. I have to agree. I don't like this card at all. And it has downside. Um, this card is actually so not good that putting it in your deck instead of virtually any other good card and puts you wait, further wait. towards losing. Did, did we just like miss helps. the point where your early play killer is that 2-1 that was just before this? Well, this card does kill early plays to an extent. 11-5 is not actually that big. Maybe 12-5 with a Gundy shooter or whatever. That's not getting the but job done. That's not actually big enough. We just went over that. They have a 2-1 that already kills early plays for yep. less stock, and it's or it's that, more efficient with already like a, one, a build no, around me deck plan. It is not more efficient because you go neg one because you're bombing into them. This one, you don't necessarily go neg one, but I also don't think it's big enough to rely on I don't think actually going to kill things most of the time with this. Yeah, so, like, thing. it doesn't actually most count. Time, most of the time, you're not actually going to kill anything, so... That's, uh, that's that my issue with been... every card with this profile. It's like, most of them just don't get big enough to kill early plays that are at all relevant. They keep printing this effect in every set, and it's like, it's well, always... They do, kill, they do kill Onodera. Okay, it kills Onodera, but, like... That's about it. <laughs> that's... <laughs> like, it'll kill my Yamis if I YOLO them, I guess. I still don't see why anyone would ever do that nowadays because everyone plays global soul climaxes. Anyways, we got to Calibol 2, I believe. Yeah, so we've already talked about this. 1 0 events, look at four cards from the top of your library, add one red character to the hand, and dump the rest. It's a fine card, and since there's so much support for it, they're pushing it very heavily. It seems perfectly reasonable um, to run, so I think this is a good card. I'm putting it at playable. Uh, I think the card itself is fine. I don't think. This the card that you start with. I think yes, you. Is. Well, okay. What ends <laughs> yes, up ha definitely what, is. what ends up happening is you look at all the cards. are like, hey, this all has Kalibolg in the name. Let's go. <laughs> you know, you've got a good point there, but I still think that it by itself, plus everything it enables, makes it good. I don't think. In I think the card itself is fine, uh, and I probably would run it even if it didn't have those interactions in Ren Archer. Um, regardless, because uh, functionally it can take the slot of what used to be Vimana. No one ran Vimana. People ran Vimana. Fuck you. They, they were bad. <laughs> oh. uh, <coughs> but the free filter and the free mill is really nice. And the fact that it has all this additional upside is great. It's still playable mm -hmm. for me. Yeah, no, I, I think it's, I'm going to go with good. Next card. End of the battle. Uh, brainstorm. Flip three cards. If there is a climax there, choose one of your opponent's characters. Put it on top of the deck. Uh, so this is like straight out of what... Um, this is Kappa. literally Com. taken from um, Zero no Sakaima. Yeah, it is one of the um, first ZNT uh, brainstorm events. Yep. Uh, this card is pretty decent when it hits and entirely worthless when it whiffs. I mean, that's the case with all brainstorm events. Yeah, well, Except see, Zero no Sakaima could one. scry at top. Like a yeah, fact. you do and have top checking had... in the set, though. Yeah, but not good top checking. Well, the top checking just lets you know if it's a character, and then it's not a character anymore because you took it. I guess, but would you really run that? No, run this card. For I would not. Instances? I would not run this card ever. Um, this card, this card suffers because you don't. Its effect isn't so good that it um, warrants putting this in your deck. Yes, it's removal, like quote unquote you know, removal, <laughs> and yes, it's extra damage. But at the same time, the opportunity cost of putting this card that you can't salvage you can't uh can't you can't get it with um any of your normal salvages or pluses and you have to rely on drawing into it uh for just a chance at quote Killing unquote removal three. yeah like i don't i don't think it's this not card a very is good, good card. enough it's not a very play. good card 
Uh, I, I think I it is the probably. I'm, I'm I think it's a trap. I'm gonna give it a bad rating. I think so as well. I'm actually just gonna take a stance and say it's bad, even though its effects are good. The fact that you might miss on it, and the fact that you need to put some significant number in your deck to even have a chance at doing anything. Like a lot of the time, you're gonna play, you're gonna pay one. It's gonna do literally nothing. Does that sound like a good event to you? No. It's a trap. This this event's a massive trap. So I agree. At least this the zero no scam ones, the the good brainstorm events there actually uh did stuff in addition. That is it for red. Yeah, uh, we can move on to blue in the next video. We'll see you guys in a bit.